this, like, are you, are you feeling it's spoiling your uni, uni experience? And he said, it, it is a bit, mum, to be honest, you know. He said, not that I went out that much, but now not being able to really go out at all and see my friends. And, and as you said, everything, except for that one class on a Monday afternoon, every all of his tutorials and everything is all online. So it's all like to Zoom. He had to go in and learn how to Zoom and all of that. So it's the same for everybody. We're all in the same boat. That's the only thing. Which is the cool part, right? So, yeah. um, so one of the things that I was telling the students is, everyone's starting from the same level. So yeah. you have a chance to be ahead of the curve if you choose to embrace the change. And That's so, it. and right. it's the same, right? There's no yeah. time in the world where everyone's starting from the same level, right? Yeah, so yeah, it's, yeah. So everyone's dealing with the same change and everyone's kind of looking at this, like, how can I take advantage of the opportunity that this presents and so we really went into like the strengths and weaknesses of what the world is like today and you know what we yeah. went into the most how to create human connection over the internet because that's the thing the isn't it? it's just not the same because I'm a hugger so I'm used to go get a simple like, oh hi you know don't give them a great big old bear hug <laughs> so that's just not being able to hug people for me has been weird it's so interesting and um, and it's also really tough because um, grow, have you watched the social network? I, I saw it years the, ago, but I seen I seen it's back on Netflix and I'm, I, I will actually watch that again. There's also another one, a new one called The Social Dilemma. And I would actually recommend watching that one even more because oh, right. I haven't um, seen that one. Yeah, because that one is a is a documentary around how the internet is affecting the way that we're thinking without us being aware of it. So right. it will give us some awareness and how the algorithms of these companies and these technologies are outsmarting us because of their capabilities in AI and yeah. then therefore being ahead of the brain functioning so that, you know, so really easily we can get sucked into yeah. all of the oh, agendas yeah. of the, the technologies. Oh, yeah. oh, definitely. I agree with you. Yeah. 100 so interesting and yeah. so which brings us back yeah, advertising to is powerful you know advertising can be really really powerful stuff yeah yeah definitely and it's but not just advertising not anymore. brainwashed by it all yeah yeah right now right now it's like it's not even advertising anymore it's just these conversations that are happening um, everywhere and then and then it's about your information diet right about how we can actually process our information diet and what we allow in our world and what we allow to shape the way that we're thinking and what we don't, which is what brings us back to the topic of anxiety today. Yeah, right? Cause yeah, like, yeah. Because you know that's not, that's one of the things you know not being able to sleep all that well and just worrying about everything. I'm a big worry as we talked about. Yeah. So just trying to get and, that all under control. So yeah, I kind of felt like I was going backwards a little bit there because I hadn't seen you for a while. I'd just been so busy with everything and I could feel myself sort of going backwards. And I thought, no, 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 I need to, I need to contact Hanny. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And just so you know, this is also going to be on my Facebook, like our, our conversation today. So fine, um, just to, yeah, just the one to let you know, <laughs> just so more people can learn from the topics that, um, that yeah. we're discussing as well. Cool. Ah, so it's really nice to connect again. And, you know, after speaking to so many different people all across the internet today, and also the whole week, I just realized how much even more important, like you said, that is important to connect from the heart again, and instead, instead yeah. of staying in the mind. Yeah. And, and one of the biggest things about um, online and information is that it's all going through the brain and it brings us it makes us really imbalanced because when you're noticing the when you look at information from an energetic form it actually all all crowds around the head area yeah. and that is essentially also what anxiety and overthinking is it's all yeah. this stuff that's like over imbalance of activity in the head yeah I, um, I'm a total overthinker as well yeah I think that comes in with the anxiety though yeah right hand hand. <laughs> goes hand in hand and then the second thing is that 
the reason why that's such a big challenge is because, you know, after speaking to, you know, just, it doesn't even matter like who it is, like what level of work you're doing or like how, you know, whatever it is, like the, the head first approach to life um, when it's, um, when it's under stress is, is the thing that's going to stay and create perpetual stress. Whereas peace and meaning is actually the opposite of being in there, but actually being grounded and the feeling of a lot of it is being in your heart. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so when you just understand that concept, it's really easy to, notice okay am I in my head right now or am I in my heart or am I in my body so when you're removed from your body and you're living up here and this goes for everybody and even myself when when I'm noticing that you know I'm starting to push and push and push with the head only then we're really ignoring the rest of our being yeah which isn't right (laughs) it's all wrong (laughs) Where it's like um it's like talking to a head you know as yeah. opposed to a human being it's like talking to a human head <laughs> yeah 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 it's funny actually because um I must be saying some subliminal stuff on snapchat I don't know if you if you have snapchat but um you get like these little bitmoji stories that come up and one of my bitmoji stories was I was sort of lying in bed and this little brain, this little brain walks up to me and pokes me in the night. <laughs> I was just laughing at that because it had somehow read through my messaging. And, and the, the little pictures, you know, you don't have to say anything, it's just your conversations with people on Snapchat. And that was the images that had come through, this little brain waking me up at night. <laughs> I thought that was funny. I was like, actually, how do you know really this? Interesting. Yeah, it's like, how do you know? Oh dear. And that is really, yeah, I'm, that is actually a really good image to have right now um, for, for anyone to realize that, that the thing that's keeping you up at night is that little brain that's overactive, that ADD brain that's just like wanting <laughs> to grasp onto that next thing. It's like that hyperactive puppy brain, right? Absolutely. And, and if you notice the characteristics, and the reason why we're talking about this is because the the way to the heart is to recognize the behaviors of the brain. And so when we can understand that, okay, this is the brain that's doing all the stuff, then we no longer have to associate and identify ourselves so much with the brain. And when we can start removing that attachment to that brain and being like, well, this brain really is all of who I am, then, then it's, we're just able to loosen the tentacles. Imagine you're like a big octopus and you have like, you know, a little, part of you in every area you can loosen your tentacles and you can actually move the attention and move the focus back into um make it back into your heart and um and and the reason we want to do that is because the heart is a more expansive place the heart is a place of compassion um, a place of patience and a place of love and connection and that's why we hug right because when you're hugging someone you're actually going from heart to heart um (laughs) symbolically and also um, oxytocin wise Mm, that's right and and how can we and so in uh, this is really funny because i literally just had this like image of the entire zoom screen going like putting our chest forward to the screen (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's funny but it's all it is just funny i was like i don't think that's gonna work we're gonna have to think of some other creative way to do this um but that's what it is yeah i've Mm -hmm. got a friend i've got a finnish friend and she always says um if, you, if, if you're in a situation that doesn't happen with me very often, but if you're in a situation where you're not quite meeting eye to eye with somebody, she, she always says to me, send out your love to them, send your love out to them into the universe and they, they will come back to you. And you know what they always do? It's really strange. You just put out this love energy or some, some kind of energy and they'll, and they'll say, send me a message or something like that. And they'll always message me. It's really strange. It's really amazing. Strange. Yeah, I it's know. Really I know. It's just like, how does that? How is that working? <laughs> it's working though. 
Yeah, but yeah, she taught me to do that. She taught me to put out, to put love out there instead of shutting the shutting it down. To 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 open up the heart more. Yeah. So that so, so she's similar philosophy to yourself, actually. Let's do it. So yeah. why don't we do that right now and um and just and you know for anyone who's watching this later as well, just to just breathe into our hearts and to send that love into all the corners of the world that have people who are connected to our love energy. Before we do that, though, I do want to bring up a very, very important point, which is the structure of meditation first. And so I'm going to show you a little screen about that so that we all know why we're doing this and how the structure of it is for the most effective way to do that. Okay, so so inner peace comes from the heart. Like that's kind of our third point. Let me just show you this. Okay, this one, all right. Okay, so we have, so we're on the topic of inner peace now because inner peace is also a place where the heart lies. And the reason why we want to be inside of our heart, like from all of the benefits that we mentioned was also because peace is a seed inside of the heart. And when we can access that seed inside of the heart, um, then a lot of the, or when we can access the love inside the heart, that brings us to the seed inside that love, which is that peace that you feel that, that not only are you connected to another person, but you're connected to all of which is the heartbeat of our earth the heartbeat of our society and the positive parts of what grows, you know, the heartbeat of life itself. And that when we realize that there is really that deeper sense of meaning that connects all of us, that creates a sensation of calmness and the description, the vision, the visual that I have usually is this like running water and a running stream that constantly flows in and out, like flowing down from the mountain, flows into the valleys, you know, and then the water goes into the earth, it evaporates, it goes back into the cloud and it comes back in. So that it's like this flowing, this is like life cycle of energy and organic connection that that really brings about that glue of at the fabric of what life is about and so when we're connected to that that's um that's that's very peaceful like when you're like lying on the on the field and you just feel one with the earth and yeah right and that's quite as well I like the sound of, of the ocean and rivers it's quite a nice calming noise I, th I always find yeah like no matter what is happening on the earth how many crazy situations and disasters that are happening the ocean never stops being an ocean mm -hmm. and the water never stops like running as it is right and so that's that longevity and sustainability in that flow as well and so just like that nature and the way that nature continuously just continues to grow and grow, so too can the way that we access our own energy. So <laughs> there are some quotes here that are that um, that is important and that I want to apply to that sensation of inner peace too. So one of the quotes that I do like about this um, particular. Steve Jobs actually did a lot of meditation. I'm not going to comment on a lot of the other ways that he managed his team, but I do like his emphasis on quality and his emphasis on excellence, right? And so when we apply, so in this quote, he says, be a yardstick of quality. Some people aren't used to an environment where excellence is expected. So he's talking about mainly um, from a perspective of product, 
However, if we're applying this same quote to the quality of our peace and the excellence in which we hold ourselves to our mental, emotional, and soul level mm -hmm. connection, how much more vigilant would we be on that? Because that is essentially affecting every single other person that we're touching. So when we approach our own well-being and our own creativity and our own love and the way that we're being in this world, why not to look at it from a perspective of quality and how much we can improve that? And why not look at it from a perspective of excellence? You know, something that we can model not only for ourselves, but for the rest of the people who we make an impact on. Yeah, I agree with that because actually a friend of mine always says to me, when you're down, when you feel down, your whole house is down. And so my energy can bring everything kind of down. And I hadn't even noticed. But she said, oh, you, you, you're kind of the driving force of your, your little household. So, yeah, I, that, I have to keep that in mind as well, definitely. So it's a good point. Absolutely. And so it's so important to realize that the impact that we have without realizing it yeah. and how much possibility can we lead that energy um, as well, the opposite of that, right? And yeah. so not only coming back to balance, although balance is the key, but also then now allowing everybody else to come into balance by us coming to balance. So it's a leadership by example. And yeah. that is... Um, that is the most loving thing you can do for anyone. Yeah. Is to show them and to bring them into their own balance, right? And yeah. so that they're empowered to make their own decisions that that create, you know, their visions and their realities because they're like, hey, it's possible, right? And that and that gives you another sense of control as well. Yeah. Good. So so that part is that. And then now the meditation structure. So the meditation structure is really, really important because the meditation structure is a lot of different people who do different meditations have different input on this. And so it really depends on what meditation school of thought you follow and what you believe is the most in resonance with you. So the what so I've been doing meditation since 2008. I actually took a class in like the Drucker Management of School, um, Drucker School of Management in Claremont, which is this, um, which is which was surprisingly an MBA class, and um, and it was a business school. And the reason why meditation was even taught in that school is because there was a professor who had who had recovered from his cancer through mindfulness. And at the same time in 2008, which is quite, quite, you know, 10, 10 plus years ago, mm -hmm. he was also realizing that it actually really supported the executive councils of a lot of companies mm -hmm. to be able to have that time to remove all thought forms from the brain to reconnect to that zero point, which is complete neutrality, and then make decisions from that place so that it's less affected. And, um, and if you don't have a decision to make, or you don't have something like that, the, the reason why you want to come back to zero point and come back to that calm state is because all the emotions that are in the field that are charged up become neutralized and all the things that are affecting in your past, you know, get put in the right place. So anything that's in the past, if you're still thinking about it, then they're in the wrong place in time. <laughs> there should be in the past yeah. and anything in the future that is causing. So the, when people think about the past a lot, it's called depression. And when people think about the future a lot, like if, like if they're in the present and like 80% of the time is thinking about the future or worrying about the future, then that's anxiety. So if you're not in the present in this time space and your mind is like either in the past or in the past or in the future, then it causes an imbalance of your presence. So the goal is to bring, to be able to acknowledge what you're worried about, let it go, put it back into the past or the future and to be able to anchor down in the present moment because the present moment is where creativity happens. It's where 
new thoughts are formed. So not thoughts about in that you had in the past and not thoughts you have from the present or worrying about the present, but new thoughts, new solutions. And, um, and you might even realize that you don't need to actually think about anything because you'll, you've already planned it and you're going to follow through it later. Um, and you can actually have a bit of a rest and the brain can have a chill. <laughs> yeah, chill out time. We forget that. That's yeah. It. Yeah. So there's a four. There's four steps to meditation structure, and the most important thing is the setup for it. So the setup for it, as you know, there are many different pieces of it. One is the posture and positioning. So there's a form, the meditation uses breath as the main component in our meditation. We call it the yummy meditation, the breath to really move energy through. So whether it's receiving refreshed energy or moving and letting go of anxious energy, we're using the breath as a tool to maneuver energy in a... <sighs> in a physical form. So using our physical body to connect with energy and then moving it through the body. And what we realize is when we're really stressed, a lot of the body actually is very tensed up. And when you're very tensed up, very little air can go through it. People refer to our breath as the breath of life, right? The thing which gives us aliveness. So if we can't move breath into the tensed tension in our bodies that part doesn't get life and if it doesn't get life then it doesn't get healed and it will stay tense and um, and that tension you'd have to move your you'd either have to massage it out or you'd have to physically move it out and when you notice as well when you're moving um, and I'm staying with the topic just a little longer is because you also notice that when you're having a massage and you actually breathe into the place that the tension is and then you let go the muscle actually relaxes as you push on to that specific spot in your body so how does this relate to heart today like as we're gonna breathe in later we want to be able to put our palm on our heart and really like just you know even to rub it or somehow open up that chest area so that we can actually receive more love and also give more love because our hearts actually are very vulnerable and um, and we protect them unconsciously a lot. Oh, and gosh, so, I'd say so for sure. Right? So yeah. a lot of times there's like soreness on top of it. Soreness, right? And heartache, heartbreak, right? These are all heart um, like non-physical heart conditions that that we carry with ourselves, like grief um, and love. But all of this affects the amount of love that you can receive. So imagine like the energetic heart chamber. It's um, every time a tear happens or a trauma happens that hurts the heart, it then um, it creates this darkness in it. And if we don't heal it, then this darkness just gets condensed and condensed and it kind of like hides in the spot in the heart. But what that means is that that space in the heart is also not freed up to receive any love as well. So while we're protecting that part, because we're afraid that that would hurt too much to look at it, um, it just gets lodged in there from an energetic perspective. And so important thing is whenever we have enough courage to do some healing some deeper healing work for the heart to notice you know what has actually been lodged in our lodged in different parts of our body especially our heart and to release it and to allow it to slowly in its own time to be let go of because in a world where our main connection source now is through the heart. If we really, really want to connect heart to heart with someone, we got to really bring our full hearts to the table um, because the internet, the screen, right, already blocks out so much of the potential to connect that yeah. when you're showing up, um, the more you can show up as your full 
presence and your full person, the easier it is to create that connection with somebody. Yeah. 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 So it's a, it's a little kick in the heart, <laughs> a little <laughs> nudge in the heart to heal. Yeah. And I think that's a really positive thing for, for those of us who, you know, who maybe think that, hey, we don't need it. It's not important or, you know, it's the past. And so when we kind of do that house cleaning work there, it's, it's great. And then we can do that with the breath and do that with posture. So when you're, it's a lot of yoga, they open, they have heart opening exercises. Yeah. Um, when you're seated in a meditation position, the four structures of meditation position is meditation structures is position and posture, clearing. You want to let go of all the things that are in your way. You want to receive. You want to receive from this overflowing source that we talked about, that river image of water. And then we want to use the breath to run through the body to create this spiral effect of letting go receiving and then going through our body through the posture letting go receiving and going through the posture so that's really what we're doing when we're doing meditation because because that's all that we need we just really need that rotation of it's like an internal energetic car wash that you're breathing in and you're just sweeping through and in more advanced versions of meditation you can actually strengthen and we do this a lot in our advanced classes we will go through specific topics and specific pieces to heal and then we will go through specific exercises to get very precise energy from different sources. So once you start managing your attention, which is what the internet has taken us away from, (laughs) the attention, once we gain back the control of our attention and we can really be like, you know, like a puppy, right? Come here, like sit down, you know, sit. And then the (laughs) attention like sits in our heart and then we breathe, then we can start really accessing energies from different places so this is all the possibilities and that the energy can be healing energy specifically it could be revealing what is our next step you know vision related purpose related it could be connecting ourselves to our intuition which lives inside of the heart and um, and different sources of information that um, that we typically can't access only with the brain so so that's it And so, okay, so we're going to go to practice each one of these elements. And um, and that's today. True. Any questions so far? No, no, it's all clear. (laughs) I'm going at the speed, good speed. Going at good speed. Yeah, yeah, because it's like you're saying with your heart as well. It's like when you... Yeah, when you keep harbor those things, it's kind of unhealthy. Yeah. Yeah, it's not good. It's not a good place to be, really. So it is better just to work through those those feelings and thoughts, really. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And a lot of times we don't know that they exist, right? Um, and that's another thing because we're so conditioned to be on the go the whole time. And, you know, we have so many things we need to do in our lives that these little tiny pieces that hold us back, we don't actually notice that, um, that they're there. And, but that doesn't mean that they're not. (laughs) Yeah. 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 And so, and so as a result, a lot of our behavior sometimes is not, it, it isn't as pure as we, as they can be. And which means that sometimes it's overcompensating for something yeah. and you're giving too much, way more than what you need to, um, or, you know, you're reacting in a certain way. If we are not- if we're noticing that, Hey, like, why are we overreacting in a certain way? It's because it's sometimes it's because of a trigger that, you know, like opens up that little wound again from some other place. And that reminds that, it, rem- it reminds that wounded exists and then it's kind of like I'm being really protective over um, and or really defensive. And so 
yeah, the concept of healing is to then allow ourselves to notice that they're there and then notice that it's a point of deeper healing. It's like yeah. showing you where the weeds are that you don't know that they are there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Cool. All right. So whoo. This is all helping us connect to our hearts. I feel like the brain is happy now. The brain's like, okay, I got what we're doing. Yeah. Now we can, and now I'll let you go into the heart. <laughs> we're convincing the brain. Yeah. Okay. That was my son. So, my wife. <laughs> here's, your son is over there. He's just, yeah, he's just, he's just gone up the stairs again. <laughs> nice. Awesome. So let's do it. So seated in your upright position, there's usually two ways to, 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 to three ways to do meditation, seated, cross-legged, kneeling, well, four ways or lying down. Some people have a lot of pain and aches in their bodies. So, um, so it's easier for people to like lie down. Um, but yeah. if you want to sit, you just sit with your 90 degrees of your knees to the floor um, knees to the floor, feet to the floor. So there's like a little 90 degree section in your knees. And then at the edge of your chair, if you're seated, if you're lying down, you just want to be, have your whole shoulder. Yeah. I usually do lie down open. when I meditate. Yeah. Yeah. You just usually. lie down with your shoulders open. Right. I'm just trying to get my headphones to sit right. There we are. Get comfy. Yeah open and then um, and then you want to make sure that you're not placing any pressure on your head or your neck as well so if you can lie flat that would be the best if it's not possible because the couch is too short then that's okay too but if you can lie flat that would allow your neck and that cervical spine area to also be relaxed Good. And then arms, the recommended way for arms is to have your palms facing upwards right around your sides. But um, most of the time, our arms actually and our shoulders are really tight. So what I would recommend is to stretch your arms to the top and just pull them out a little bit and stretch them out from side to side. Yeah. And so just loosen up the side body. And you take a deep breath in and now we incorporate the breath, which is now take a deep breath in all the way to the bottom of your belly, breathing in. You may also move your spine and your head in a circular motion as you take a deep breath in again. Opening up your chest, moving your arms backwards. And as you exhale, you can loosen up your hands and bring them in a big circle reaching all the way around your body Ooh, all the way back down you may also make sounds because sounds have a way of helping the body relax too okay so next breath so we're doing going into the second step now which is breathing in and clearing so noticing actually we set up the stage first so we want to make sure that when we're doing meditation and that we also set a protective bubble around us, there's a lot of key components to this, which we'll teach um, in more, more advanced classes called the 12 dimensional shield. But right now what you'll do is you just visualize taking a deep breath into the center of your belly. Visualize a impenetrable egg around you, allowing every single piece of energy that's not yours to leave, command that they leave your space, never to return here again, going back to the source of light.
taking a deep breath into your entire body. And command that any other person's energy, any other person's information, any other person's known and unknown, aware and unaware, past and future, on whatever time, space, dimensions, leave our space never to return again. And going back to the bright white light. Allowing yourself to experience and see any and all blockages in your heart now. So let them show up as whatever is there. Show up as color, show up as density is, show up as whatever it wants to show up as right now. Locate them and allow your attention and your breath to just like a pin, right? When you're putting a push pin into a cork board, put a pin on that spot in the heart that shows you the biggest block inside that is ready to be released today that's in your highest alignment. Show up now. And allow yourself to move your attention into that spot. Just give me a nod when you see that spot and allow that nod to show me that you've got it. Great. And now allow yourself to, instead of poking the pin through it, I want you to breathe into it. So connect with that source of infinite love from 10,000 floors above. Plugging your head into the center of the skies up above, allowing yourself to Draw in energy from the earth, sensor of the organic crystalline earth structure. So the heartbeat of the earth, metaphorically, symbolically, and energetically. Breathing that from the bottom from your feet. Allowing that to flood your entire body as it goes upwards in a column. Or if you're lying down, have it completely flood your back. And then as it goes up your body, let it just lift and go right through your body and connect it right to the skies. And as you exhale, let all of it that is blocking this highest alignment energy and highest source to let it diffuse through your body and go to the skies and hook it into prime creator source, whatever you call that, mother nature, that natural organic sense of your unique magnetic healing, calm energy, that liberated version of your true self. And the difference that you're here to make in yourself, in your own life and in the world. So now I want you to go back into that little spot in your heart 
And I want you to look at that spot and take a deep breath into it. Drawing in from the energy from the skies above and the earth below, and also any of your seven Hara lines, which are basically energetic lines that connect us in all different directions. You just enter and invite in all the energy from all directions to help heal that little spot, whatever it needs. It might be an emotion that's trapped or an absorbed emotion that's in there. So whatever it is, take a deep breath, open up your heart, open up your courage. And allow yourself to be intimate with her and allow her to show you or him if your heart is more masculine or neutral or it. And allow for your heart to show you how it wants and how it will love how it receives your breath. So just gently, lovingly, and kindly breathe into that spot and see what it needs. Is it a emotion? If it is to release an emotion, then feel it. Allow yourself to feel it. You're in a safe space. Allowing, I'm just putting a shield around our group today, so Triple shield, 12D shield up. So you can do this process work. Breathing to your heart and also notice as you're taking a breath in, what is the size of the space that you can breathe in now compared to the beginning of the session today? Does it feel like you can breathe into it as wide and as far as your shoulders or how spacious. Can this be? And allow yourself to let go of what is allowed to be let go in this moment of time. This is of your highest good. Whatever you're allowing yourself to let go today, let it go. We have a couple of Chinese viewers on our lives. I'm just going to address them in Mandarin a little bit. And just allow yourself to continue breathing in and out of your heart and letting whatever it wants to show you and just be present with your heart as you take a deep breath in and out. Okay. So, 讲中文的朋友们, 
你们收到了你的讯息。我们现在做的冥想就是关于心脏的呼吸，还有跟高层次的自我通过心脏和呼吸和冥想连接。我下次可以用中文给你们做这个冥想，但是现在如果你想跟着我们一起做的话，你可以用呼吸的方式吸进心脏，摆脱所有的阻碍，然后让它完全放下。OK。然后继续吸气、吐气，让自己来到一个平静的状态。Okay, all right. So as you do that, also allow yourself to notice if there are any other tensions in your body, and just take note of it. And let them know that you will come back to it later. And take a deep breath in your heart. Now expanding it. 吸气，吸进你的心脏。现在拿一个很大、很大、很大的阳光般的能量。吸进心脏 ，and as you exhale, allow that to expand that into your room. Whatever label that you want to share with your house or your room or wherever you're living, just allow that intention to live within your heart. And using your heart as an amplifier to share that with the room. So taking a deep breath in. And ripple it outward. And continuously do that for five more counts. Now, 允许自己吸进心脏，然后通过爱的方式让自己的爱心放大，吸进心。吐气时，让它散发在每一个角落，你住的地方，或者是你现在的地点。想象它环绕着你的周围和每一个角落。Now, in the next breath, allow yourself to breathe into the heart again, and we're about to share it with all of those who you care about. In this entire world, and just see that as a blanket that reaches each and every one of their hearts. So take a deep breath in and watch all of those connections light up and shoot little packages of love into their hearts, and watch them light up or. Receive it in whatever way they are free to receive. Deep breath into your heart, and now shoot it out like a little pieces of wires. Connect them to one at a time or all at once. Allow yourself to do this over and over again in the next five breaths. Deeply in and out. Remember, always breathing all the way down to the center of your body, underneath your belly button. Deep breath in. Ooh. 在下个吸气，吸入你的丹田。
，然后呢，让心，自己心中的爱心，吸进心。吐气时，想象一个地球，地球上住的你所有关心和想要散发爱的人，让他们全部显现出来。可能是黄色的点，吸进身体时，吐气，让它全部接收到你的爱。And then the next breath is <laughs> breathe into your whole system and receive all of the infinite love that is here for you, that you receive from yourself as well, because you just breathe into the whole world. And now anchor yourself down to the center of the earth and seal your body and energy up. 现在，下一个呼吸的情况下，在情景中吸进你的爱心，接收你所散发的爱，然后在吐气时，让它再继续循环，把这个能量。带入地球的中央，然后像像拉链一般的，把自己的能量场地方。And then, whenever you're ready, allow yourself to shake your body, coming back to the present moment. Stretching yourself out, and allowing yourself to come back. Woo woo! <laughs> 然后准备好的时候，让自己回到当下，摇一摇身体的部位，张开眼睛，回到我们的面前。How was it? Relaxing. <laughs> What's that? Say it again. Relaxing. Yeah, and、What、that is、happen? all it takes. <laughs> yeah. There's so many ways that we can do it in a lot of other type of situations, and there's a lot of practice that we can do. And I was doing a lot of healing and energy work in the background as well to support all of us who are here today. And the point is that this is, yeah, this is an activation, and it's also a practice, so that you can clear your own space all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Needs to be done. Have you found it challenging to keep up with the practice, or how is it? Yeah,、so、I haven't really done anything towards it, so I think that's where I was starting to take the go backwards, as I said to you. So I thought, no, 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 I need to, I need to contact, I need to WhatsApp this girl. <laughs> yeah, perfect. So awesome. That's usually what it is. It's very difficult to keep it up, especially in the beginning. Um, before it becomes a habit, just like anything, right? You know,、it's, exercise it is, all. It is, and it's not just it's not just that,、um, honey. It's like this this whole situation. My, I think I said to you before, my routine has gone out the window. Like I used to, I used to have this routine, used to keep me directly in, you know, down the straight line, perfect. But seriously, this whole thing has kind of knocked me silly. Really, it really has knocked me sideways. Yeah, it's just really, really. Trying to find another way, like you said, like trying to find 
And instead of, because I was just seeing negative, 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 trying to try to find a different way of approach to it and try and see it as a more positive, like try and get something positive from it rather than try and see all the negativity in it. That's, that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah, so just trying to get myself into a routine. It's putting it, it's getting a routine sorted out and getting this into the routine. Because uh, you sent me some of the, some stuff there last night as well. Which, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I need to I need to like take time to like really like relax and listen to it. Yeah, that's the most important. So for people who are watching this who also want that um, want the different audios that you just received, they're basically a series of audios that have to do with some of the top reasons why we're holding ourselves back. And part of it is the first one is actually the perfectionism and workaholism um, audio, which is basically the reason why we're in this doing mode the whole time. And why we can't stop is because like, there's something in our brains, they're just like, I really, really, really want to be a, um, I really just want to get this done really well. And it's just like, go, 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 go. And sometimes it's over going than, um, than what is required. So it's over emphasis on doing rather than being. And so the perfectionism audio will bring us back to releasing some of these patterns that has held us in the doing mode for, and the, this, it's more about the emotion that comes with the doing. So if you're doing, 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 but you don't have the emotions attached to it, that's okay. But because the emotions are actually, it creates a sensation of trappedness and suffocation. That's more, right? Yeah. So that's more of what is, what is eroding our, like, capacity um, and for making decisions, for being patient, for being loving and for being calm. So, so what it is, is that a simple meditation works from a day to day, but to really jump into another layer of transformation and another layer and way of being is actually to heal all of the parts, just like what we did with our heart today, but to heal all of the parts that actually created these patterns of behaviors to begin with. And so what the perfectionism and workaholism. And then there's another audio that talks about um, breakthroughs as some of this hard work um, syndrome. Those are all places in which the meditation will take you through the past experiences, which could, which the most important past experience that have affected this relationship with stress and work and, um, and anxiety, and then remove the sources of those one at a time so the more you do it each time you do it you'll probably work on a different uh, you'll probably see a different source and a different cause of it so you'll it's like an onion each time you do it you'll go into a different layer and then eventually you'll get to the core where you will just realize oh I actually don't really need this one anymore and I can move on to the next audio so that's how you would use that audio. And a lot of times, like I actually do them before I sleep because the removal ones really help to de-stress before you sleep. Um, and then in the morning, there's also mo morning meditation audio that's about 15 minutes that um, you can do to set up your day. So that one usually just like, first thing in the morning, you just like play it and then just like lay in bed and, um, and wake up with that one. So the morning meditation is good for that. That's a good idea um, because I think that's, probably the best way for me to fit it in with my routine and funny you just said that because I was just sitting here thinking you know what you could listen to that before you get up in the morning and then you just said it so that's <laughs> I know it's really really weird <laughs> maybe I was picking up on your thoughts <laughs> <laughs> you was I was saying it I was just thinking that I think that's what I'll do so is that is that one is that one is that one of the ones that you'll be sending me on the email list? Yeah, week? so I'll be sending okay. you the rest of it um as a yeah, in this week. I'll try to get the one the morning one to um, faster. I'll have my team Oh, that'll be good actually because I think we should I think I should try and keep the ball rolling now. 
Yeah, exactly. Let me just um, let me just go through each of the ones because then that way you have a better understanding of what each one of these are. Right. Um, let me just pull it up. Um, anything else you wanted to share before? As I no, pull this no. Up? I mean, we pretty much we pretty much um, covered the only thing. The only thing I, I have got. Did I talk to you about? Um, did I talk to you about my friend in Cambodia and him sending me some of his woven materials? Yeah, uh, you did. You did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I might just need you to, you know, use some, maybe just advertise a little bit for me as well, just to, uh, you know, I'm kind of helping this little village out there. Um, so just the more people that could buy, I th you know, I haven't seen the woven materials yet, but they sound, they look lovely on the, on the internet. So um, I think you could definitely, um, yeah, bring it to one of the sessions next time you just show yeah. it to the group. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'll do. And then maybe if, if they're interested, they could could help out this little village. Yeah. It's like, it's so great that you're doing this for the village and that he's doing this oh, for the village. They're just so nice. They're just such a beautiful people. They really are beautiful people. Oh, let me get yeah. I can have a wee look at that. Okay. So. Oh, there's quite, a, there's quite a few. There's seven of them. Yeah. So there's seven of them. And then you also get three extra for, for, for this particular, um, right. this particular offer, which is, which, um, which is time sensitive. Let me just see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Here we go. Make it bigger for you, for you. Okay. So we've got the workaholic perfectionism healing lesson, which is the theory portion of it for eight minutes. And so you can listen to that anytime. And then the actual process to reduce these pieces that are unconscious that have been programmed in us. That's about 33 minutes. So what you'll do is... I would just do this before I sleep. Yeah. So just go 33 minutes and you can put it on a loop. And then so right. I'll just play in the background. So your mind, your unconscious mind will just do it, its own thing. Yeah. Um, success mindset breakthrough is really about redefining success because right now with this new world situation, re new routine, um, it's very different to, it's a very different definition of success. Like, you know, maybe this, the, the new definition of success is about feeling calm, like for the whole day, right? And maybe it's about just being able to get everything done without, uh, with less stress. You know, there's like different yeah. layers of success at different stages of this transition. And so, um, so yeah. there's a lesson piece of it. And then there's the actual activation, which is the meditation portion. Um, and it goes way deeper as well. And oh, right. so it that's goes four, right? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's the fourth one. Um, and then the fifth one is the debrief. So um, a couple of people share their experience while they were going through this. And so you can also okay. tune into that and see what everyone else got out of it. And then you'll realize what potential there is. And you can also you can also go through it again to see if you want to focus on some of the other pieces. So so the activations are you can do them a lot of times and each time you do them you'll just go deeper so imagine it is um it's like a it's like colon cleanse colonic cleanse is like the first thing that came to my mind <laughs> before for energy field you know so i was like why why colonic cleanse but like that's the first voice i yeah and so so it's just going through that over and over again so that you know each layer you clear out more things um and you want to do that quite regularly in terms of um not like once a year, but more, you know, you do them as much as you need to, and then you space them out um, so that you can actually update your system for that. The next one is self-love embodiment. And this one is, um, it's a very personal relationship building meditation that helps build self-love within ourselves. Self-love meaning the connection with us and the forgiveness of everything that we've done in the past and um, connecting us to the hope um, and the confidence that's um, of the future. So that's, uh, it's a really beautiful practice and, um, and very sweet energy in this one. So that's the six. And the number seven is the 10 minute morning meditation for focus and right. motivation. Yeah. So this is the morning one that you want. Yeah. And then the three additional bonuses is the workaholic perfectionism worksheet, which is basically um, in the actual 
activation, you'll be working on one belief about work that is inaccurate, but is somehow driving your actions. And so you'll work one at a time. And so here, what I've done is I've listed out all the, um, a couple of other possibilities of the beliefs that you can work on. So you don't have to think of them yourself. And so it just makes it easier. So basically there's a part where you fill in the blank to want to work on whatever one you want to work on. And then the activation happens. And so that's the worksheet. And then there is a release refresh and action journey. Um, that's, um, that's a deeper release session. You can also start that in the morning as well. If you're feeling like really blue a certain morning and you really want to wake right. up refreshed, but you just don't feel refreshed. Right. <laughs> and then that's, um, that's useful for that. Um, and you want to take some actions. So like, let's say you have a lot to do that day and you just yeah. really want to make sure that you want to start on the right foot. Um, that would be this one um, because maybe if you do this one, it might not be enough. Um, then right. you would just want to jump straight into this release, refresh, and action one. It's 25 right. minutes. It's slightly longer, but it's more comprehensive. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that's a good point, actually, that you're making there with the like in the morning, if I know I've got so much to do, I'm just like, oh, I just can't face this. I can't face this today. Yeah, and, I, that, and I've, I've only had that since this whole thing kicked off. I have never felt like that. I've never woken up thinking I just can't face this day today and I just, I've got so much to do. I just can't cope with what I've got to achieve today. And I know I've got to do it, so it's got to get done. But yeah, so that, that would be a good one. The days I do feel like waking up like, I think it's because I'm tired as well because I haven't really slept because you're constantly thinking and thinking and thinking. And with the COVID as well, you're, you're thinking about, you're having to think about it all the time it just affects everything so that would be a good one yeah for sure and then for the th if you're feeling like in the middle of the day and you are just you're having sort of that moment of like I'm just so overworked or overwhelmed or something like yeah. that I would go back to the 10 minute morning one just for right. a quick check um, yeah. because you might have like a 10 minute break or something or just 10 minute go into the garden and just like do this um, or even like by the window or something with um, natural light is usually really helpful with the vitamin D and all that yeah and then yeah so then use the 10 minute one as like a short injection and then use the long one as a more you know just like a gentler way of waking up your body to right. to come back to itself Right. Um, and then this last one is called Now Liberated Leadership, Shamanic Drum Journey, Anti-Procrastination and Empowerment. So if you've noticed, let's say like one or two days in a row that it was kind of a blue day, then right. you start want you, you want to have a more deeper house cleaning inside. And so this one is, um, so you're realizing that you're procrastinating or things or things just take you like a little bit longer to get done than you usually want to or you're just completely ignoring certain things because they're just too much to deal with um, then you want to well. do this one yeah <laughs> yeah because yeah. yeah. like it kind of compounds right yeah so yeah. that yeah. would be procrastination is a good word <laughs> Yeah. So it's like an anti-procrastination. It takes away the procrastination piece right, and then good. it gives you that empowerment. empowerment. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so that's that. And then anytime you want to, um, yeah. So, so I would either use this one when it's like a couple of days, or I would use the highest self-love because the highest self-love would just allow you to just be gentler with yourself. Um, right. Yeah. yeah. And then if there's a specific thing that's reoccurring, then I would go back to either the success mindset breakthrough or the workaholic because these are very specific. Let's say that there's a specific thing. Are these all detailed out when, on each email, like what it is? Is it what is it, it is? Uh, yeah. Is it detailed? Yeah. Out? Got it there. At okay. the moment, at the moment, it's not yet, but um, but I will oh, I'll put in some more notes what, in there. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take a, I can find my phone. Yeah. I'm going to take a quick photograph of this. Okay, yeah, go for it. Let me just do that real quick. Yeah, awesome. And I'm just going to post this link for everyone else who is on FB. Could you move down when you've done that link? Oops. Could you yeah. move that down to that last three, darling? Oh, there we are. Yeah, cool. That will help me to remember what we've been speaking about, you see. Mm hmm. Perfect. Yeah. So 
so that's that. Yeah. So good luck and have fun on those. And of course, you know, I do, we can do one-on-ones as well. And, yeah, um, and then yeah, the group yeah, activation. Set that up as well. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Set that one up. And then the group activations is, you know how in the success mindset breakthrough and the perfectionism, we're doing one at a time. So when I'm doing groups, I'm doing like 20, 100, 300 at a time. So right. it's just, it just speeds things up and I'm doing it yeah. in the background. And, yeah. um, and then I'll take, I'll have you do your, like, I'll have everybody do their, their own process. I'll take them through it. But then I'm also doing just massive clearing work in the background. So that's like a, that's usually like one or tw- once or twice a month. Then that way it right. just like keeps you in that space. But it also right. what it does that might be the way to go yeah. then with the group. Maybe it's join the group mm-hmm. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once or twice, a, um, once or twice a month to allow that to happen. And then the one on ones. That one is about specifically zoning in on your specific goals for that specific month or week, right. and then have um, have the focus and the decision making and the actions for those goals so right. uh, that's how people usually use the the one-on-ones is like specifically when something's recurring they can't seem to get rid of it and they're just like okay cool okay that's great so what, what i'll do is I'll, I'll get all the information i'll wait to get all the information come through on the emails um, that we um discussed last night as well and uh and then we can go ahead and i can contact you about maybe uh, was it three? Did it say it was two group and one on one or three group and one on one for the block? I can't remember what you said. Yeah, I'll have to check it now because the, the yeah. first kind of shifted a bit and then I'll just like drop right. that over again. Yeah. Okay, that's what to do. So I can understand and then we can catch up maybe. Well, of course, you're moving. So yeah, good luck. My gosh. I know. Are, you, are you going we'll back to your a family? Continent soon. Is, yeah. is your family out there? Oh, okay, cool. You're going home. Oh, so that's nice. 